Hello, I'm Katie Pullinger and welcome to the Food and Drink Show. Now, we all know that staying in is the new going out. What with the tough economic times and with the punishing winter we've had, shows such as Come Dine With Me have inspired us to get cooking for family and friends and to entertain like never before. So how do you get the perfect evening dinner party and how do you avoid making a faux pas? Well, I'm joined by winner of Celebrity Come Dine With Me, Linda Barker and master butcher Keith Fisher. Guys, welcome to my dinner party. Oh, thank, thank you. you. <laughs> um, now we are live today, so if you do have any questions for us, please do submit them now and we'll try and get through them as soon as possible. Right, let's get stuck in. Dinner party ideas, where do we start? Should we kick off with the menu? Is that yeah. a good place? Yeah, it's a yeah, very absolutely. good place to start. And, and Keith, you should remind us of some good cuts of meat. Yeah, and, and I think well. the opportunities nowadays, I mean, we've, we've got lots of good butchers, lots of good outlets for meat. Go and, ch go and talk to your butchers, ask him what's available mm. at different times of year. But at the moment, what we're doing is to look at some of the more traditional cuts and the traditional ways of cooking them. Which are? Things like brisket of beef, yeah. uh, shoulder of lamb, and belly of pork. Um, they're the three that, uh, you know, a lot of opportunity with them. And people shouldn't be scared to go for, you know, a, a nice big cut of meat. I mean, no, it's not I, that I mean, challenging, I think is the it? The, again, the opportunity really is to go for a big cut of meat because mm. they can leave that gently cooking away yeah. for couple of hours while they're getting on and everything else is prepared like the table the flowers and the wine and everything else well while, while we're there let, let's talk about where, where should we start with the flowers because of course you know around Christmas time you've got lots of things like crackers and things to keep people entertained but mm -hmm. what can you get people talking about on the table the rest of the year well I think if you're if you're entertaining at home you should be really relaxed and I yeah. think the menu should be relaxed and should feel comfortable with what you're cooking and and once that's sorted out and you've done all your pre-planning and you've thought about your menu and all that's yeah. sorted out it's really about setting the scene and most of us you know we're very proud of our homes mm -hmm. and we want to maybe show off a little bit so kind of make sure your general housework is yeah. done it'd be surprising <laughs> you know how many how many guys are perhaps entertaining and they forget to pick up their yeah. sh socks and shoes yeah. let's say um, so kind of, I would say, make sure your house is really nice and tidy yeah. and then think about where people are going to sit. Yes, definitely. But then also you might want them to have drinks and yeah. if it's fine weather, you'll be outside or if it's in the lounge, you know, make sure that that's all nice and tidy. But I think to make something special of the dining table makes... I don't know, it shows to your friends that you've made an effort yeah. and that it's special and, it, and, it's, and it's occasion. Um, I, you know, I've done some odd little flower arrangements. Sometimes, you know, you get those little baby cauliflowers. Oh, yeah. I've actually stuck those in flower arrangements, Brilliant. you know, yeah. just to kind of get people talking. And, mm. you know, it's, it's just fun. Yeah. You know, it's, it's a sense of fun. Yes, it might be, um, you know, a, a dinner party, yeah. but you should be able to be, relax with your friends and, and yeah. enjoy yeah. it really rather than getting hot under the colour and steamed up about things and it becomes, you know, a frightful mess. If you're yeah. stressed, your dinner party guests will be stressed and it's just going nowhere. Exactly, exactly. And what about if you're on a budget? What's, what's the best way to go, say, with, with a table arrangement? Um, well, you know, here at the table we've got some twigs, you know, they're <laughs> seasonal twigs. Yeah albeit wrapped with maybe th uh, I think probably five lilies yeah. so in, in a suitable container so pick things from the garden yeah. or uh, beg borrow it and steal it from a neighbor's garden whatever that's seasonal yeah. twist in some twigs like that with a few fresh flowers and mm. then you know you, you've got something quite attractive to look at exactly. or you know just seasonal things you know yeah. daffodils are out at the moment and they're pretty inexpensive mm. Um, but be imaginative, you yeah. know, you'll see posh restaurants with, um, I don't know, maybe um, amaryllis or gerberas all tied up with string, you know, mm. in a tall pot and they can look really striking. Uh, so and get, inexpensive. And inexpensive. Yeah. Especially so, if you stick seasonally, then they tend to be, yeah. and the same goes with, the, with, yeah. with meats as well. well and to it? add to that, I mean, there's always the excitement of when you get something unusual to cook, get your yeah. guests to guess what, they, what they're eating. <laughs> <laughs> What, what sort of kind of meat they're eating? And things we've done things in the recipe book. That, um, traditionally, you get a brisket of beef, but yeah. would be a rolled joint, and we're suggesting you buy it and you you lay it flat and cook it that way, so you get long, slender slices. 
Oh, it's making me hungry. <laughs> now, apart, from, apart from decor, what about the, the atmosphere, about lighting, music? What kind, what kind of music do you think is a good choice? Well, we were chatting earlier and, and someone mentioned um, on the radio that they, they brought in, they got all their guests to bring mm. in an iPod and they all oh, had yeah. like 10 minutes each at the iPod, which is really, again, a nice yeah. icebreaker and it kind of... It makes people, you know, puts people in a good mood. It makes them chat, and mm. and and already, you know, that kind of whole atmosphere is being created. Yeah. So I think that's a really brilliant idea. Yeah. I've never heard heard of that before. That is a good suggestion. Yeah, it's yeah. great. Or send an email beforehand and get everybody to send the, their favorite so songs or yeah. their favorite album and try and mix them all in that way as well. That's true. Yeah. And music kind of really is important when you've got people in your house, you mm. know. It, and I think. Don't take yourself too seriously yeah. or at every stage of that, that evening, really. And, mm. and, you know, I bought some Barry White the other day. <laughs> and that's destined to get people chatting and grooving, you know what I mean? Yeah. Be ridiculous, yeah. you know, and, but it, it's an immediate kind of icebreaker yeah. and, and it's kind of just... Fun, you and know, once everyone's had a glass of wine or two, the, you know, all, all the pe all the music snobs are the ones that are singing along to the Barry White, the loudest <laughs> voice, aren't they? <laughs> Indeed, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and lighting, uh, do, should it be candle lit or shouldn't it be candle? You know, obviously, if you want a romantic setting, it's going to depend on, or, or if you're having steak, mm. or like, gosh, there's so many things to think well, about. Well, I, th I think you know, candlelight is great, and it's great also <laughs> at covering up a multitude of sins. So we've got a perfect white tablecloth here, but not everybody has, you know. It's it's perfect to dim the lights, put yeah. the candle out, and no one will notice a few wine stains on your on your table linen. And you know, it's it's um it's whatever you've got really, isn't it? Uh, mood is really important and lighting you know, is the way of yeah. creating mood. But you know, I've been to restaurants and it's like full on fluorescent light and yeah. it can kind of kill a meal and kill an atmosphere. Yeah. So be be sensible. You know, if you've got a dimmer switch, use it. Um, candlelight is great. Make yeah. sure they're not scented candles because sometimes that can interrupt. You know, you're, yeah. if you've got a big floral candle or um, an orange scented candle or something, you know, it can interrupt your yeah. kind of flavours of the food as well. So just ordinary white dinner candles are great. Well, if we've just had a question actually from Matt Eaton, he said, "Are scented candles a good idea, or can they affect the taste of your meal?" Well, this okay. is what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, it's true. I mean, they can be quite overwhelming, and you don't want to put mm. people off. Yeah. So uh, just keep them to the plain old basic yeah. ones, really. And little tea lights, you know, tea lights are cheap yeah. and cheerful. And uh, you can pop them into uh, just little simple votives or um, little wine glasses, like little tumblers or shot glasses. And they can look really pretty when there's lots of them scattered mm. across the table. Perfect. And, and the other thing I was going to add, you know, just to make things a little bit exciting, if it's not too dark with a, a dimly lit candle, yeah. is mm -hmm. the... Um, we quite often do a very big joint, but bring it to the table and carve it for the guests so they can see yeah. what they're getting. It's, it's, it really does bring everyone bring, together. Bring Funny enough, I, I went to, to a table. wedding where we had lamb and so every, somebody on yeah. every table had to carve yeah. their, their joint of lamb. And it was okay. such a nice way of breaking the ice for everybody. Um, obviously, you know, we'd be doing a wedding every week, but you know, to, to, to bring <laughs> everybody together, it is yeah. a nice way. I think that sharing mm. of food is really important. Yeah. And that's why I think, you know, the people are learning to really love entertaining mm. at home much more. Yeah. Meat Matters have done a, a research survey and, it, and that suggests that more people want to entertain yeah. at home more than ever and four out of ten would prefer to entertain mm. at home rather than go out to a restaurant so much yeah. more people are doing it and getting involved with it and I think you know if we can if we can learn to kind of not be too stressed out about hosting mm. our own dinner parties then that's yeah. the way forward really so it's, it's fun and it's you would be encouraged to do it again and again of course I mean uh, Funny enough, what we're talking about the the, the carving. Um, one of our questions that we had in earlier uh, was from Tom Whitman. He says he's hosted a couple of dinner parties, but haven't found myself sweating and covered in food by the end of it, as well as missing out on the banter at the table. So, of course, if you are bringing the you know, the carving and the preparation into the the dining experience, then um, you're not missing out. No, and that's where these recipes that we're talking about today actually lend themselves exactly to that, because they are fairly long, slow cooking methods, mm. and you you can be enjoying a glass of wine with your guests while they're cooking. And uh, w w what types of cuts are good for that kind of cooking? Well, br brisket of beef, the yeah. sh shoulder of lamb, um, belly of pork, and uh, 
I mean, there are, there are loads of other yeah. cuts as well. I mean, I, I think that's where it's important to go and talk to your butcher. I mean, he might, he may well say, well, you know, try this or yeah. try that if you've got something else that. Uh, and that, that is one of the really lovely things about going into your local yeah. butcher nowadays is that they really do know their stuff. Yeah, I know they always really. have, but y you forget. And when I, you go to the supermarket and it's just yeah. pre-packed, sometimes you just want that expert opinion, and, and don't you? they can give you advice on cooking it as well as, as what to take. Yeah, yeah. which is re really, really nice. And it, it makes the whole experience for the host as well, I think, makes it a bit more special. But, um, I mean, yeah, with, with, with celebrity chefs on telly, it does get very make it, it does get you more excited about food nowadays yeah. i think doesn't it especially i think i think it does and and i think there are lots of cooking programs on tv and lots of people dipping into them not necessarily to cook those dishes themselves yeah. i mean I, I don't know, Gordon Ramsay cooking with 50 ingredients is, yeah. is not going to make for a pleasant no, it's kind of... make your head spin, isn't <laughs> yeah. It? yeah, you're going to be in the kitchen all day, all night, I think, yeah. the day before. But it's, it's about, you know, um, entertainment, and we get a lot from those shows. And, but it's not necessarily the food we will cook for ourselves. And it's like, you know, me at home, I've got loads of recipe books. Mm. I just look at them and read through them. And... Maybe one out of every 100 recipes yeah. probably I'm going to attempt to cook. Yeah. But I think, you know, entertaining at home shouldn't be, you shouldn't really worry about it too mm. much. And I think those easier recipes are the way forward, yeah. really. Keep um, it fairly simple. Keep it yeah. simple, but really good tasting food yeah. is the key. You really still want to wow your guests. Oh, absolutely. You want to, you know, them to go, oh my goodness, that was just the yeah. most incredible lamb. And I've you want them had. to leave and tell everyone how oh, great yeah. you are. Oh, she was <laughs> such a great cook. You know, we yeah. had this fabulous meal. And yeah. that can be down to good ingredients, yeah. a few simple kind of marinades, mm. and, you know, some clever ways with vegetables. Yeah. And hey, presto, you're, you're a whiz in the kitchen. Exactly. Well, we do actually have a question. Um, sort of surrounding the celebrity uh, chef thing, Shirley Golding says, "I wanted to make my dinner, take my dinner parties to the next level, Heston style. Oh. Uh, I don't really have the budget for pigeons flying out of giant meat pies. So, what can I do to blow people away? So, if you do want to find that one simple thing to take it to the next level, wow. what, what, what can well, you? What well, can well you do? I think we've done that with the cuts that we've chosen yeah. and the recipes that we've chosen because we've taken a really old-fashioned traditional cut mm. like brisket." And we've introduced a jerk seasoning, so given okay. it a tint of the Caribbean. We've taken the breasts of lamb and we've given that Chinese flavour. <laughs> yes, it's true. And we've taken some of the belly strips of pork and given them a sweet and sour flavouring. So right. mixing it up a bit. Just adding that hint of yeah. modern flavours with yeah. tradi old traditional cuts. I, I love the idea of the bringing new, new recipes to mm. old... <laughs> old uh, style uh, which is what's happening so much more nowadays I think people are it's part of that make do and mend mentality that we're kind of bringing back a bit more of a 1950s feel about everything it's, it's true and it's mm. it's about being economical with mm. with our money and being slightly and not be thrifty. wasteful yeah. not be wasteful using mm. every every bit of, mm. of the meat that we we've cooked with so it's about maybe if you've got a joint on the Sunday it's yeah. about you know, using it in cottage yeah. pie the next day and, you know, strip frying it, the, it on another day or whatever it might be. Um, it is about people just taking care about what they're eating yeah. and how they're pre preparing and cooking yeah. food. And of course, they can get these recipes on the meatmatters.com website, yeah, can't absolutely. they? And uh, yeah. I like the sound of this jerk seasoning. Oh, you, you'll love it. Oh, it looks you That's going on the barbecue it, this yeah. summer. Absolutely. My yeah. goodness. Oh, yes. Um, so what about colour themes? Should you, that's another, another option to think about. Yeah, I think um, there's a massive amount of colour in, in interior decoration at the moment. Moment. Mm. I think that because people are staying home more, you know, our homes are less about being investment properties yeah. now. We're staying put, we're not moving, and uh, people are learning to live their, love yeah. their home a bit more, mm. which means they're decorating a bit more. They're getting away from the white and the magnolia paint, and maybe yeah. they're putting a wall paint. <laughs> a so feature it, wall. A feature <laughs> wall, indeed. So it's not, you know, and if people have got a dining room, it's a lovely place mm. to be able to use some bright colored wallpaper or paint a bright mm. wall. You know, and like we've got here, some plates, it's pretty inexpensive yeah. these days to get good china, good cutlery, yeah. and coloured glassware. And it's just those little touches yeah. that kind of, I don't know, it's about, again, it's about pride mm. of people coming to your home and being proud of, of 
cooking, what yeah. you're cooking, and the pride goes into the food, as well as the presentation. And it needn't cost loads yeah. of money these days at And all. it can be fun while you're doing it as well, yeah, and, and of, making all your adornments and things like yeah, that. Yeah, of course. And yeah. you will always have those, you mm. know. You'll always have your set of red plates. And, you know, you may only bring them out once in a while, but it's kind of mm. nice to have something special. Definitely. Let's try and get through some more questions then. Um, we have one from Suffolk Lad, he calls himself. Entertainment-wise, I'm unsure what to do post-dinner. As much as I like coffee, I typically top up the glass of wine and continue the chat in the lounge, but sometimes it feels like things are fizzling out. How can I entertain my guests and make them leave the house on a high? <laughs> what tips it's have we like got to keep the party going? <laughs> I love party games. I yeah. think they're great at the end of a meal. <clears throat> And uh, again, everybody's relaxed, you know, hopefully they've had a nice meal and, and yeah. it's kind of nice to leave the table and just kind of uh, continue the night. You know, if people mm. feel awkward, then they're more, more likely to get up and, yeah. and go home. Now, as a, as a host, you might want them to go, yeah. but I like people to hang around yeah. a bit and, you know, maybe... You That's when the good chats come out exactly. as well. <laughs> so introduce a few little games, you know, mm. we play that one where you stick a post-it on yeah. your forehead with a celebrity's name on it and yeah. you have to guess who you are. And all of that yeah. so, you know silly stuff um, I think it's kind of nice to prolong that evening and, yeah. and make that experience just last a bit longer definitely uh, or of course make the actual dining experience and the, the meal last longer by you can I guess do more courses well, yeah, if you, you wanted I mean, to you could do one or two of the starters or nibbles couldn't you and yeah make up something like mini mini meatball kebabs or Ooh, yeah. mini Yorkshire puddings or something yeah. like that with some uh, small pieces of the jerk brisket perhaps popped in them Definitely, um, sounds good. Some little strips of pork. Yeah. Um, be very keep nice. Them going, so just yeah. Keep them coming, you know. It's quite an Italian yeah. theme, actually, to, to keep the courses coming, yeah. isn't mm -hmm. it? Just to keep, and there's no reason why you can't bring your own uh, recipes in and just just keep people yeah. eating. <laughs> <laughs> um, let's see, have we got one more question? Um, I have a dinner party this weekend with a few people coming that don't know each other. How can I make sure the conversation f uh, flows smoothly? Well, that's a similar, similar vein in what we're talking about, but when there's that pause in conversation, mm -hmm. Do you, do you need a list of, of topics to come up oh, with? What do you think? Well, that's your, the hostess of a, yeah. a good party will kind of keep that, yeah. that going and that yeah. conversation going. Again, just pick up tips from your friends. And somebody I was talking to earlier said, you know, before everybody sat down to their mm. meal, he'd, he'd managed to get whole, whole baby photographs of everybody that was at the, at the dining table. And they'd pass them around so they'd all have a little giggle about, yeah. you know, oh, that's so-and-so, or that's you, or, and that's you, when you were doing yeah. that, whatever. So little things like that are always good. The party games, of course, are yeah. always great. Um, but just, you know, that's the art of a good hostess, yeah. really. It can be hard work, can be hard work. So yeah. have a few tricks up your sleeve. Yeah, make a few, a few little pointers to remind who has what in common as well. Yeah, and so on that, to look yeah. out for your guests, you know, and if someone yeah. is uncomfortable or they're not yeah. chatting, you really should kind of steer yeah. them or involve them in the conversation. Never forget that whole six degrees of separation. There's of course, always yeah. something that binds everybody. Exactly, yeah. and try and avoid those conversations that always end in a, in a row, like, <laughs> like politics. <laughs> you, know, you know it's always going to end up in a row. <laughs> um, now, Keith, can you just give me a few, a few more of your recipe tips before we have to finish? That would okay, be great. well, I mean, you know, as well as some of the roasts that we talk about, think about one-pot meals, you know, some of the cheaper cuts or less expensive yeah. cuts can be bought for that with seasonal vegetables put into the oven to cook for a little while. And while you're doing that, also think about buying extra quantities and you, you know, maybe freeze that for the next time you Good have, a, tip. have a party and so on. Good yeah. tip. And the great thing about all the different cuts that you can get is that you do have uh, budgets for everybody. Oh, if you've got a absolutely. lot to spend, then yeah. wonderful. You can absolutely. buy yourself a whole pig if you want to. But then, of course, you can, you can get the yeah. cheaper cuts, which is wonderful. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for joining us today. Great tips. I hope our viewers will be uh, noting them down and using them for their future dinner parties. And if you need more ideas on what you can get cooking with for the perfect dinner party, visit www.meatmatters.com. We'll see you next time. Thanks for joining us.